John Deuterios is tracking the oil markets right now. So we're seeing that Brent and WTI, they are both climbing a little, but they're pretty steady compared to yesterday. But there are clearly, John, are plenty of factors at play here, aren't there? Uh, a lot of factors, Allison. I would say it's the Gulf on edge, the Persian Gulf on edge. Uh, in fact, we've had a total of six tankers hit over the last uh, four to five weeks. Uh, a pumping station for Saudi Aramco that was a target of uh, missile attacks. And then we even had an airport in Saudi Arabia, one of many, uh, coming under attack. In the past, this would have shot up oil prices in a very significant way. Not now. And there's four key factors behind it. Let's take a look. Uh, number one, we have the U.S. Uh, impacting the market, but not in a very positive way uh, in terms of the threat that we see today. Uh, first and foremost, we see demand starting to drop here. Uh, the IEA, the International Energy Agency, said that uh, daily demand is now rising 1.2 million barrels a day. That's well off the highs we saw in 2018. Uh, it's the sanctions against China, Mexico, Venezuela, uh, Iran that even Sam was talking about there, impacting demand going forward. Number two, the U.S. production is surging like crazy. Three and a half million barrels a day over two years. It's like adding another major Gulf producer to the mix. And this is forcing uh, OPEC demand to be dropping significantly. It's the lowest level since 2014. So if we bring up prices, Allison, we have to acknowledge we're in a bear market. We had a surge going forward uh, at the end of April to $75 a barrel on North Sea Brent and in the 60s for WTI. We're off $12 a barrel for both of them right now. Uh, and this will mean very likely that the OPEC, non-OPEC meeting that's going to be taking place in Vienna, uh, they're going to either cut more to try to rebalance the market or at least stand pat. They're looking at the inventories right now, particularly in the United States. The inventories are rising because demand is falling with all the uncertainty that the Trump administration has put into the market, despite the pressure on Iran that we see today. So what do you think? If there is a cut in production and tensions remain high in this region, could we see oil prices you know, spike, a spike again, sort of as they did yesterday. Well, it's interesting you bring it up. The International Energy Agency was saying that demand should rise in the second half of the year. I'm not a believer of it because of the uncertainty in the market, unless we have this stumble into a conflict that many are talking about here in Iran. Nobody seems to want a war. They want the pressure on Iran. They want Iran to back off its influence here in the Middle East. Uh, but they, if we go to war, it'll be a different game entirely when it comes to prices. But if you go back historically, whether it was the fall of Colonel Gaddafi in Libya, uh, the U.S. invasion in Iraq, the Gulf War in 1991, the Iran-Iraq War, we all, at every different interval, saw gains of 10 to 15 percent rising in oil prices and then holding. We see a gain of 4 to 4.5 percent yesterday. It didn't rise. And today we see a gain of about a half a percent to 1 percent. Certainly not reflective of the tensions we're feeling here uh, in the Middle East, in and around the Persian Gulf.